Hi. Hello. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My next guest is one of the giants of American movies and American comedy. He began his career in 1912, and his studio produced the films of The Little Rascals, Harold Lloyd, Will Rogers, Laurel and Hardy, and other comedy greats on television. His studio was responsible for producing My Little Margie, The Lone Ranger, The Life of Riley, Topper, and scores of other popular shows. We're honored that he could be with us tonight. Please welcome Mr. Hal Roach. This is very nice of you to be here. I, I'm, I'm very, very excited, and the folks are uh, equally excited. This is an unbelievable list of uh, uh, talent that you have worked with. You started in 1912. Is it all right to ask you your age here at this point? A little over 90. A little over 90. Let me read you a list of the people who, who started their careers with you. Uh, director George Stevens, Leo McCary, Frank Capra, uh, actors and actresses Gene Harlow, Janet Gaynor, Fay Ray, Boris Karloff, and Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase, I guess I, I don't know much about. Well, um, Charlie, in the early days, came to work for me. He came to the study, uh, and this guy came at me. I had never seen him before. And he says, I'm an actor, I'm a director, I'm a writer, I'm a producer. I can do anything you want me to do. He says, I can play anything. I can play heavies, I can play characters, I can play a tree, I can play a lighthouse. I said, Charlie, just a minute. You play a lighthouse, how do you play that? He says, very simple. <laughs> Uh, when, when you started in the beginning of your career, you did everything, too, didn't you? Oh, yes. I started as an actor and a uh, cowboy, and then I was an assistant director, then a director. Then did some had stunt my own work company. also? The what? Did some stunt work? Oh, yes. Big money, too. You fall <laughs> off a horse for a buck. <laughs> and you'd beg the guy to let you yeah. fall off for yeah. a uh, And then you started your own studio. That's right. How did this come about? How, was that the, with Harold Lloyd? That oh, was, yes. Yeah. I, uh, Harold Lloyd and I were both uh, actors together. In fact, Harold Lloyd and I and whether the guy, there were three eunuchs at the birth of Samson. And Harold and I and this other guy were the three eunuchs. <laughs> That's a fine credit to have on any resume, isn't it? <laughs> Play, played a eunuch at the birth of Samson. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have... Um, uh, a clip here. I believe this is from the Little Rascals or the Our Gang Comedies. Uh, I'm not sure of the difference, but they were both started out to be your your property, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, this is probably something that folks are most familiar with. Uh, they still run these things all over the world, don't they? Oh, I think so. Yes, they all seem right. to. Uh, so we're going to take a look at uh, a scene from. I guess it's called Schools Out, and it's an Our Gang comedy film. Watch the monitors. <laughs> Oh, no. Mm -mm. 
couldn't do that. I want to get married sometime. Oh, gee, give us a break. When do I grow up? <laughs> Why, Jackie, do you want to marry me? Maybe when I get big and grow whiskers. Are you sweet, darling? Now, was, is it true that you originally designed that series to be about kids and animals? Oh, yes. And this was... Uh, this was that was a dog. Yeah, this was the dog. This is Pete the Pup. Uh, and then, then later you actually did, you, uh, did an all-animal uh, series of uh, film shorts, right? Yes, it's called the Dippy Doo Dads. All right. <laughs> now these are are are, the, are these? Do we still have prints of these somewhere? Because I I'm... oh yes, but uh, I don't. They're not used very often. Okay, this is a scene from one of those Dippy Doo Dads. Oh, yes, is that yeah. right? Describe for us what we're looking at here. If uh... well, I can't see myself. Oh well, the, the very fine animal trainer who trained all the animals for the Yar Gang trained all these animals for the Dippy Doo Dads. And uh, he was originally an Italian organ grinder who had monkeys, but his <laughs> monkeys could almost talk, and he taught all these uh, animals. And here we have a, a monkey on a, a donkey, I guess that yeah, is. Yeah, it's a goat, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did these do pretty well? Did people uh, take the dippity oh, yeah, oh, doodads yes, to their hearts? They, we made them in two reelers. They should have been made in one reel. They were a two reeler is a what? A 30 minutes. Uh, and a one reel would have been 15. half that? I see. Again, a magic moment from the dippy doodads. <laughs> One more here. Okay. There are no humans in these at all? No. They're all, the, the dippy doodads were all animals. Yeah. Uh, before you started uh, producing things, was, was any other studio in California doing comedies on a regular basis? Oh, sure. Max Sennett. Uh, oh, yeah. The big, we, I, we were supposed to be enemies, but we were very friendly, actually. Uh -huh. And what was the difference between the kind of things that you were doing and the things that they were doing? Well, uh, I, I started with Harold Lloyd in, in the early days. That's in 1914. And uh, he had a comedy costume on, as most of the comedians did at that time. Uh, Senate was way ahead of me as far as the number of pictures made and the price he got for them and so on. I didn't pass Senate until uh, actually sound came in and uh, the, the theater changed from the Nickelodeon to the Motion Picture Palace and they started making big, important feature pictures and the two-reel comedy was very important at that time. And I. I had more stories in them, a little more. They were, they were pretty much all slapstick, weren't they? The well, the, the, the original, yes. And they, for the first four or five or six years, I mean, Harold Lloyd, you threw him out of every scene and he landed on his rear end in the next one. I mean, yeah. you know, everything was banging, bang, 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 bang as far as comedy was concerned for both Senate and myself yeah. and others making comedies at that time. Did, did Stan Laurel start out as a single? Did you, when you first found him, was uh, he working no. alone? No. Uh, well, uh, there's a big question. I mean, I, I thought I found Stan Laurel at a, at a uh, vaudeville house on Main Street in Los Angeles. But they tell me that he made five pictures or so at my studio before that. Hmm. But at that time, his eyes were light blue and they didn't, sh uh, didn't photograph. So he became a writer. Then when they had panchromatic film, his eyes were able to, to see his, you know, the photograph all right. And that's when Laurel and her uh, the started. Uh -huh. But he, he originally started out as a single and then they, they got together, is that? Well, I, I don't know. I don't remember the other, those yeah. other pictures at all. I don't know what happened. But when they, it was after he was in vaudeville that I saw him in Main Street and brought him to the studio. And then for about a year, he was a writer at the studio because his eyes wouldn't photograph. And then Pan Comatic and his eyes did photograph. We put him with uh, Hardy, who was a heavy working at the studio, and then two developed into a team. All right, we have uh, lots more to talk about. We'll continue with Hal Roach right after we take a look at this. Right? <laughs> Roach is uh, here. Tell, tell me about the story 
of the Laurel and Hardy film. Was it Big Business? Was that the name of the Yes. Film? That, uh, was this the one where the house came into play? That's you did right. something to a house that you weren't supposed to yeah, do? Well, just very quickly, uh, they, were going to, uh, they were selling Christmas trees in the summertime, and we needed a bungalow. And one of the boys working at the studio had a bungalow close to the studio. The, the location man went over and made a picture of the house and showed it to the director. He okayed the house. And uh, uh, we said we were going to wreck your house, but we'd put it back and pay you so much money. Well, what actually happened on the way to the, the house, uh, the director who had the picture in his hand, he saw the house and he said, here it is, stop. So they all oh, there about five or six cars with trucks stopped and there in the, the house. And, um, and uh, the first the director, the assistant director says the key doesn't work. And uh, <laughs> the, the director says, never mind, we're going to break the door down anyway, break the door down. So they did. Well, they completely wrecked this house in two weeks. They broke every window, they cut down every tree, they cut down every bush. They wrecked everything there was about the house and the last day a man and wife and two kids drove up in front of the house. The woman almost fainted, and we had the wrong house. The other <laughs> house was blocked away. Is this, now, is this the, the house that you used, or the house you were supposed to use? This is recall? the house we should not have used. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a, another one. So this is the one that ended up being in your film. Well, yeah, it's no, the same no, one. This, is the, this is the one they used, yeah, but they shouldn't yeah, have. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. And it cost me a lot of money, I would guess, huh? Yeah, I had to pay twice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who, do you, who do you like now of comedy performers that you see? Oh, I like Letterman very much. Well, now then, you don't need to... You, no. That's, that's, that's awfully nice of you to say. But who, uh, that uh, when you're at home watching television, that do you enjoy the, the work of? Oh, uh... Uh, if it, if he would just get above the belt, I like Benny Hill, uh -huh. the Englishman. I I think that he would be funnier than Chaplin, if uh, he would stop doing all the dirty things that he does. But how is anybody with kids going to say watch Benny Hill? Yeah. yeah. And as I say, the kids made Chaplin, and the kids could make Benny Hill too if he just cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, is there anybody in American uh, television oh, yes, that you enjoy? Uh, okay. Connor is uh, very good, uh, and uh, there's not, I mean, there's a lot of comedians, but there's not a lot of very funny ones. Yeah. Uh, tell me about uh, your meeting with uh, Mark Twain. Well, you killed the story to start with, but I'll tell the story. <laughs> I went to Sunday school at the Park now, this Church. This will still work all right, don't you think? Huh? I haven't ruined, I really haven't ru well, ruined. Well, we'll find out at the end. <laughs> I guess we will. Right? <laughs> I, uh, as a little kid, I went to Sunday school. Wait a minute, excuse me. Let, me. let me rephrase it. Have you ever met any legendary lit literary figures? <laughs> yes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I went to the Park Church school, Sunday school at Park Church in Elmira. And when you went to Sunday school, you went into the auditorium and the minister had a few words to say and uh, they did a little prayer or something like that. Then you went to rooms with a little card that you were supposed to memorize from the week before and you were, somebody was to recite that or show that you didn't. And the teacher gave us a few instructions and then we came back to the auditorium. The minister said a few things and if we were lucky, then we were through. But every once in a while, they had guest speakers for the children. And believe me, they were lousy. <laughs> and, you know, you, the speakers would come on and you'd sit there, and n most of them were over the heads of the children anyway. You couldn't understand a word they said, or you didn't, weren't interested in what they said. And on this particular day, an elderly man with a gray mustache and regularly gray hair well done, and they announced it would be a guest speaker. And the guest speaker got up on the rostrum, and he looked the kids over, and he said, uh, this is not going to be a very long speech, because I know you children don't want to hear a very long speech. 
In fact, I was in church a while back, and there was a, a, a man talking about, a, a missionary talking about the poor heathen Chinese. And I was interested, and I thought, well, I will give a dollar for the poor heathen Chinese. He says, the man kept talking and talking and talking about the heathen Chinese until finally I said, maybe 50 cents was enough for those heathen Chinese. <laughs> he said, they kept, he kept on talking and talking, and finally they passed the uh, plate. He said, I reached in the plate and took out five cents for my car fare home. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of the story by Mark Twain. <laughs> Have you, uh, uh, have you had any recent offers to, to get back into producing anything for television? Oh, Movies? nothing that uh, was very financial. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Do you remember the last time somebody brought a proposal to you and said, what, what about this, Hal? Well, uh, uh, I have written and still have in my book, I mean, dozens of shows that I think would be good on television, but I don't think anybody's very interested. And I'm getting a little bit too old to do it anyway. Mm. So, I mean, then, 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 as I say, that... Yeah. Uh, so you're just going to take things easy pretty much from here on. Yeah, have, I hope so. Uh, have, uh, is there anything else you wanted? I know that the... Uh, well, is there well, anything else that we need well, to Well, as I say, I, I mean, I'm a little can't sing, can't dance, and all, but years ago, I was in Honolulu, and some people over the mill taught me the bashful hula. And if you people wouldn't mind, if I can have a little Hawaiian music, Paul? I will try to give them my... Now, I have to... I have to turn my back on the <laughs> Hawaiian music. Is it going now? Yeah. Oh, come on, that's Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead with the music. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're out of time. I want to thank my guest, Mr. Hal Roach. It was a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. Also, Brooke Shields. Tomorrow night, we will have Jay Leno and from the Police Sting, plus exclusive coverage of the Rocco Laurie Intermediate School 8th Grade Presidential Elections. Good night.